So that first U.S. tour was pretty crazy. And I know on one of the cities, you know, they did end up going back to New York and they did uh, all the highlights and the hits, but they, um, they ended up going to Kansas City, which they weren't supposed to go to. Well, Brian guaranteed the boys a day off. And it was Charlie O'Finley. Right, yeah, the bear. And he basically said, I'm going to get the Beatles for Kansas City. And Brian Epstein said, no, really, my boys really need some rest. And he came back. He went from 50000 to 100000 He finally guaranteed them, I'll pay him $150,000. <laughs> and Brian says, I, I'll ask them. And he said, whatever you think, Brian. You know? So for $150,000, Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. That's what they opened with. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Right? They got a crazy order in there. I'm going to get me one. That's an expensive uh, request. And it's the only time they played Kansas City on that tour. Correct. I know Paul had went back there last year, and he did that song in Kansas right. City when he was back there. So that's pretty uh, amazing. For $150 million, I think. Yeah, I think Paul, <laughs> Paul got a little bit more money than the first time he was there. So, but this first U.S. tour, it was a lot of fun. I'm sure they were exhausted. But then they got back to England, and they decided they're going to change their writing style a little bit. Instead of writing, I want, she loves you, I want to hold your hand, please, please me, they decided, and they were influenced by Dylan. And Bob Dylan was yeah. a huge influence. He also turned them on to a little thing called marijuana the first time uh, that they toured America. In fact, Bob even thought that when they sang, I can't hide, I can't hide, they were singing, I get high. And they said, no, Bob, <laughs> it's, I can't hide. However, I, if you watch the Ed Sullivan show, I think there's a mischievous John Lennon. It sounds like he could be singing right. Get High. Just because they did a little what they call Easter eggs in the video games, little hidden things that they got away with, like right. girl, they're singing tit, 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 in the background, you know, little, little schoolboy, I can get away with this kind of a thing. And that song being from 65, Rubber Soul had songs that were just incredible, like In My Life, yeah. the, the lyrics. Places I remember. All my life, though some have changed, some forever, not for better. Some have gone, and some remain. Never replace. I love you more. Was this the first time that they really felt like they wanted to sing about their feelings? You know, his lost uh, friends. That well, I think they were they were pop writers at first, and you know, they were going to break into the pop music world, but. You know, there was a time when John finally said, I'm tired of writing these soft songs, you know, meaning not intelligent. And then, of course, when Dylan came out and other people, you know, John thought, oh, well, that's more like it, you know. And John's, here I stand, head in hand, turn my face to the wall. It's kind of his Dylan-esque attempt. Right. I do love away. And, and they did a lot of songs like that on, on Rubber Soul and, uh, you know, very introspective writing and Nowhere Man and, and so Nowhere like Man, please listen. You don't know what you're missing. Where John's really writing about himself, he's thinking, you know, he's got everything in the world and yet I'm nowhere, man. Mm. Literally. And then the words came to him. And Paul's, to lead a better life, I need my love to be here. Here. Making each day of the year Here, there, and everywhere And everywhere Excellent stuff. We're going to talk about uh, something that happened that Jennifer actually brought it up to our attention that happened 50 years ago this week, literally a, a couple hundred miles from here. And uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back.